Hello, I'm Dr. David Pate, President and CEO of St. Luke's Health System. Welcome to our Fall Forum. It's great to be here with you today and to update you on our activities. In the spring, we look ahead to our planned initiatives and goals, and in the fall, we review our progress in implementing these initiatives and achieving our goals. As a community-owned organization, St. Luke's is defined by what we do on behalf of our communities, and that's what I want to focus on today. We're in a period of intense transformation, and that's what we're showing with our Take Care Forward messages, which we started to share with you and our communities earlier this fall. This is my granddaughter. She joined us just after our spring forums. She is my why. Why I'm motivated to do the right thing to transform healthcare. She represents the triple aim and why we're working on better health, better care, and lower costs. We've been making headway and building structures to support accountable care. Accountable care is how we are taking care forward. And we are doing so in keeping with our 2013 goals to create an exceptional patient experience and to create exceptional outcomes through teamwork. Presley and all the other kids are why we're doing this work of transforming healthcare. It's about our grandkids, our friends, our neighbors, and many of the people in our Take Care Forward messaging. In the spring, I shared how forward-thinking St. Luke's physician leaders have been, including Dr. John Schott and the team in Baker City, Dr. Andrew Chai and our heart failure clinic, Dr. Jim Torres and our stroke and stroke certification efforts, Dr. Betsy Olberding and our perioperative clinic, Dr. Kevin Shea and Project Zero, and Dr. William Traverso and his team's work on pancreatitis. I told you about nurse Tricia Bredenson and what she's done to improve our HCAP scores and Mike Griffiths and the innovations from our pharmacy folks. But we don't sit on our laurels, due largely to our pharmacy innovations. Our Mountain States Tumor Institute is the only three-time winner of the Association of Community Cancer Centers Innovator Award. Our stroke work in Magic Valley means we are applying to become a primary stroke center of excellence. Our application is before the Joint Commission now. And we've continued to see impressive results from Project Zero and the rest of those physician-led innovative efforts we've talked about in the spring. At the same time, we're focusing on care prior to hospitalization. We're starting a new metabolic syndrome clinic this fall because metabolic syndrome threatens the lives and health of many Idahoans. As many as a third of adults may have this combination of health conditions involving high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, and obesity. Tackling these problems as early as possible is critical. Our metabolic syndrome clinic is just one of the most recent examples of our increased efforts around population health management. Another example is the new track at the Star Elementary School that St. Luke's made possible earlier this fall. We know that population health management means working in lots of different ways, and the track at the elementary school and the clinic are just two of our many initiatives that will help us tackle our region's health challenges. We're close to being in the top 10% in the nation when it comes to patient satisfaction. We are making strides in our inpatient scores and we are moving into measuring our clinic settings as well. And we had great confirmation of our quality in September when we received the highest rating among Idaho listings in Consumer Reports' first ever survey for surgery. And now, Treasure Valley CEO Chris Roth is going to bring you up to speed on some of our most important initiatives. Hi, I'm Chris Roth, Chief Executive Officer of St. Luke's Treasure Valley. I'm going to report on some of the system initiatives we talked about in the spring and share ways St. Luke's Treasure Valley is taking care forward. 
St. Luke's two system goals for this year are creating an exceptional patient experience and creating exceptional outcomes through teamwork. Those two simple goals have let us stay focused on our triple aim of better health, better care, and lower cost. Here's how we've worked to create an exceptional patient experience. Yay, our youth engaged in activities for health program has continued to improve hundreds of lives in powerful ways. Through Yay, children ages five to 16 with a body mass index greater than the 85th percentile work on healthy lifestyles. During programs of eight and 12 weeks, they focus on healthy eating, physical activity, and positive behavior changes. Yay is taking care forward. Here's an example. For many, the goal is an improved BMI and better fitness-related tests and measures. Just as importantly, many kids and parents are reporting better emotional health and quality of life. One teen who didn't want to take part told us that he was regularly made fun of at school, struggled with life, and was very depressed. Through Yay, he had become active enough to play goalie in an after-school soccer league, was making healthy food choices, and had become a program mentor. That's taking care forward. We have Yay programs now in the Wood River Valley, the Magic Valley, and the Treasure Valley, all ensuring that children and families across our region can be reached. Our co-partner program is also flourishing. Co-partner has taught us just how important individualized care plans and behavioral health screenings are, and how much attention needs to be paid to factors other than diagnosed conditions. Yeah. Clinical integration is the context for many of St. Luke's initiatives as we move toward a continuum of care that extends beyond the walls of our hospitals. Through our work with co-partner and other efforts, we've seen why we need to focus on a network of care and clinical integration. Our programs are good, and we have good intentions, but we need to continue to break down walls that have meant many of our programs have operated in silos. We're trying to do a better job through our integration work to make sure everyone is on the same page with the evidence-based standards that will make our accountable care efforts successful over time. Much of our clinical integration activity is increasingly occurring within the select medical network, the delivery system in our area that is positioned to provide population health management and that includes St. Luke's and many independent physicians and facilities all working together. St. Luke's and Select are tackling many of the most meaningful health challenges the people in our region face and working to make sure an integrated approach is taken. Ongoing education, standardized processes, establish measures, and tracking towards success. That's what clinical integration is, and we can expect that work to continue. I want to end by sharing with you some exciting examples from the Treasure Valley of how we're taking care forward. When it comes to patient access, our 381 Today program, improvements in scheduling, our complementary service that transports cancer patients from Eastern Oregon to the Treasure Valley for appointments and treatment, and other efforts are taking care forward in very meaningful ways. We're making access to transportation, physicians, information, and financial support easier all the time. I'm very proud of all the physicians and staff members who've shown the imagination, the creativity, and the dedication to our patients that have made these innovations possible. I'm the proud father of four young children and they're my motivation to come to work every day to make our health system even better than it is. I'm so proud of all that we do at St. Luke's, but I'm particularly proud of our dedication and commitment to the health of children. So, a final note related to our children's health programs. I've talked about YAY, but our progress toward developing a pediatric trauma program, our incredible work with pediatric cancer patients, and our focus on pediatric mental and behavioral health including the newly expanded and very dedicated team with our Pediatric Mental Health Clinic, all deserve headlines as well. Thank you for your time, your attention, and for all of your support of St. Luke's efforts. 
A lot of our work and effort center around our data and the systems that support the collection and sharing of data. We've seen incredible growth in the use of My St. Luke's, our electronic health record system. Patients have been signing up at the rate of about 4,000 each month, and about 62,000 people are now asking questions, checking their medical records online and lab results, and getting information through the system. And many of them are doing so through their smartphones. More than 500 physicians and other providers are able to connect with their patients through the system, and the use of My St. Luke's to transmit prescriptions continues to grow. We estimate that about 2.5 million prescriptions have been sent. St. Luke's physicians are taking care forward through My St. Luke's in many ways. Dr. Henry Thompson with St. Luke's Children's and a specialist in pediatric gastroenterology has been using templates and open writing spaces in the My St. Luke's platform to personalize information for the families he works with. He's tailoring information and health plans and figuring out the most efficient ways to share useful information about the dozen or so most common conditions and needs that he sees. And because he has tailored them, his patient discharge plans show the care and detail that he has put in and the potential and value of our electronic health record system. Dr. Thompson is using the system in a way that enhances his patient relationships. It is how he is taking care forward. My St. Luke's is meeting the needs of our Treasure Valley patients. And now Magic Valley patients have the opportunity to see and use their records as well. The Magic Valley Jerome Patient Portal launched in September, and we're inviting patients to register during clinic visits and using our call center to make the process easy. We are aiming to have 30% of patients across St. Luke's Health System able to use patient access through our electronic health records a year from now. Our EICU is another of our big technology investments, and we're getting great early results. We launched Idaho's first EICU program in January, and this fall, we expect to be supporting critical care units and emergency rooms at 14 hospitals, as far north as Grangeville and as far south as Twin Falls. We've heard great stories of success. In one case, an EICU physician was alerted to a patient in distress based on a change in the patient's heart rate, and that was picked up by the bedside monitors. The EICU integrates with patient lab reports and records, and we were able to get the appropriate resources to the patient quickly and got the patient to the operating room where it was found that a blood vessel had ruptured. Dr. Jim Souza tells about a patient in our Meridian ICU. The respiratory therapist reported that the ventilator was not delivering the needed volume. The EICU intensivist in Boise ordered a chest x-ray, focused in with the camera, and saw that the endotracheal tube was displaced. The intensivist contacted anesthesia to replace the tube all in a matter of minutes. Merely a month before, the therapist would have had to page Dr. Souza. It would have taken three to five minutes to find him, for him then to call back and for him to ask questions. He would have had little information and he would have ordered up chest x-rays, but would not have been able to see them. The x-ray cart would have been wheeled around and the x-ray would have been queued up for a reading. The whole process would have taken 10 to 15 minutes and then they would page Dr. Souza again he then would see what had happened, and then the tube would have been resecured. With the tube dislodged and sitting above the vocal cords, it is Dr. Sousa's opinion that the airflow would not have sustained life over a significant amount of time, and that it may have made a significant difference to treatment and recovery for this patient. Our EICU was made possible by a CMS innovation grant and we applied in August for a second CMS innovation grant that would allow us to apply telehealth in post-acute outpatient settings. We'll learn in January whether we'll get this grant. 
Our payers have signed letters of support, and we know we've got a strong application. And now, McCall CEO Mike Finella is going to catch you up on Healthy You and some of the other work we're doing. Hi, I'm Mike Finello, Chief Executive Officer of St. Luke's McCall. I want to share information about a few system initiatives and how our McCall team takes care forward. Chris mentioned our two system goals, and I am so proud of the impressive strides we have made toward these goals. Healthy You is a great example. Healthy U has created an exceptional experience for dozens of St. Luke's employees and their family members, helping them to achieve life-changing health successes. We are keeping teamwork principles in mind as we build a structure to improve community health outside St. Luke's settings. Taking the population health approach, our Healthy U team is working with the Select Medical Network, which Chris talked about, and harnessing our clinical integration efforts to maximize consumer engagement and well-being. Healthy U programs have produced double-digit improvements year over year for participants in everything from blood pressure numbers to smoking cessation. It's inspiring to see our employees adopting lifestyle changes, building self-esteem and vitality, and becoming role models for their coworkers and neighbors. How does Healthy U take care forward? Here's an example. Our food services group took the Healthy You spirit and literally ran with it, getting more active and losing about 900 pounds collectively, nearly half a ton. People you and I know will live longer and healthier because of Healthy You. That's taking care forward. We're also building our abilities when it comes to advanced illness management and palliative care services and processes. The clinical integration work that Chris talked about and that Healthy You is increasingly tied to is also helping us identify which patients are appropriate for different types and levels of care. We're starting to be able to catch people upstream before they get sick or really sick, which means that care management can include meaningful life issue conversations when they are possible, not when they are critical and rushed and not meaningful or thoughtful as they might otherwise be. Through those clinical integration efforts, we're learning and sharing the very best ways to have those conversations and equipping our physicians to have these valuable and needed talks with our patients and their families. With all these initiatives, we're working more and more with community partners. We know that managing the health of a population in a sustainable way requires a delivery system with the scope and depth necessary to accomplish St. Luke's mission of improving the health of people in the region. And we also know we need our partners to do this. We're collaborating with Central District Health, the Idaho Suicide Prevention Hotline, Friends in Action, the Garden City Community Clinic, the Mexican Consulate, and dozens of other agencies throughout our region to ensure a seamless health experience one that moves us toward our accountable care triple aim goals of better health, better care, and lower cost. Here are other ways that McCall is taking care forward. Our integrative medicine clinic team members have been innovative and passionate contributors to the health and well-being of our community. Our patients also benefit from many interest system partnerships. For example, patients with advanced illnesses such as COPD, cancer or cardiovascular disease are cared for by our primary care physicians in collaboration with 25 visiting specialists from St. Luke's Treasure Valley. It's a great example of coordinated care close to home. And through our partnerships with the fire department, the University of Idaho, and other organizations, we are instilling a culture of health in our region. At St. Luke's McCall, we have walking meetings whenever possible which are a smart way to improve our own health, increase productivity, and lead by example in creating that culture of health. We can be proud of how we are improving the health of people in our region, and the best is yet to come. Thank you for everything you do to take care forward. We're also making improvements when it comes to how we bill. This benefits our patients first and foremost, but our system as well. 
we have been working on a new online payment portal for patients. iVinci Health has been working with us to develop quick, convenient patient payments online and no matter where patients receive treatment. Our online payment center launched in late summer for patients to be able to make one-time payments. Another program, which will allow patients to manage their accounts and pay bills over time, is being tested and we think will be ready to release to the broader market in January. Our online payment center isn't the only improvement we're making, even though it is one of the most tangible. We've also been figuring out all the steps in the billing process to make sure we're as efficient as can be as part of our commitment to patient-centeredness. We've heard from our patients and their families about how and why our billing practices need to improve. And I will say that the Pate family has had these challenges ourselves. I've heard these same sorts of things from many of you and I'm glad to report that we are making headway thanks to the great work of our Revenue Cycle staff and leadership and their passion for keeping the patient at the center of the work we do. I also wanted to put our billing in context for you because I know you hear a lot about the high price of health care. It's a bit misleading and I'd like you to be able to educate your friends and colleagues. St. Luke's is proud of the fact that our costs and the costs of health care in Idaho are among the lowest in the nation. Health insurance costs for Idahoans also are among the lowest in the nation. Even so, we do agree that prices are too high and we're working aggressively to change that. Jim Engel is going to talk here in just a bit about our payer relationships, but you should also know just what a difference our relationship with Select Health is making to lower insurance costs in our region. Our Select Health relationship is a great example of how St. Luke's is fostering creative competition which benefits our patients. Interest in Select Health and its offerings have been strong, and they are ahead of their targets less than a year after entering the market. And now, here's Cody Langbane, our Wood River CEO, to tell you more about our work with diabetes and other efforts. Hi, I'm Cody Langbane, Chief Executive Officer of St. Luke's Wood River, and I want to update you on several system initiatives and what we're doing in the Wood River Valley to take care forward. No patient hours. Focus around our system efforts has to do with our 2013 patient experience and teamwork goals. And I want to share how some of these efforts are improving the patient experience in particular. Our work in the area of diabetes is a great example. Our data, and Jim Angle will have more about that in just a bit, is getting better and better and has shown that diabetes is a big area of opportunity. The percent of Idaho population with diabetes has doubled in the past 15 years to 8%. And we know that the costs, the pain, and the suffering of diabetes and the conditions of the disease are something we want to work to reduce. We see from early data, for example, that collaborating with our patients here could mean cutting hospital readmissions for complications and related problems by 25%. And we know that the cost of care for patients with diabetes are more than double those for people without. Diabetes Education and Management, or DEEM, has grown out of this understanding. DEEM is rooted in process improvement efforts being made by many providers, hospitals, clinics, and community partners, and aims to improve education and care for patients with diabetes. DEEM is working to help standardize best practices in the delivery of patient care and information, improve clinic resources for diabetes education, and approach diabetes in a networked fashion rather than the episodic, traditional way. DEEM is a good example of how we are applying new emphasis on care management and care delivery. It's that more seamless, end-to-end -end approach that is improving the patient experience. It's how we will take care forward. We expect that many of these initiatives will succeed as population health plans rather than as isolated, site-specific efforts. We're engaged in many population health efforts that focus on care management, preventing hospital readmissions, and coordinating care. And while many of these efforts have started in and have centered around hospitals, we expect that more programs will move to the outpatient setting over time. 
Care coordination work system-wide has to do with medication reconciliation, standards for discharge, communication with primary care, community providers, and post-acute care facilities, along with care transitions. Working in all these areas at the same time is challenging and complicated, but it's the right thing to do. Spine health is another area of opportunity, so we're expanding our Center for Spine Wellness into Magic Valley and Fruitland. Taking that networked approach that Chris and Mike have talked about, we're working to appropriately standardize the care of patients with back pain. We've treated and conservatively managed hundreds of new back pain patients this year and expect to see hundreds more in the coming year. We're already seeing reduced rates of advanced imaging as an early outcome. Our work with diabetes patients to coordinate care and to address spine wellness all have one thing in common, our accountable care triple aim of better health, better care, and lower cost. And now I want to tell you about how we are taking care forward in those communities that St. Luke's Wood River is privileged to serve. You may not have known, but Idaho ranks 50th in the nation when it comes to access to psychiatric providers. The need for outpatient mental health services has never been greater and Wood River and our foundation are rising to the occasion, partnering to develop a well-coordinated mental health program. St. Luke's and the Wood River team know that treating underlying mental health issues is crucial to the health of our community, and we've hired a full-time psychiatrist and plan for two more full-time licensed mental health professionals. We're thankful to our foundation and the philanthropists who are helping us to take care forward in this very important way. I'm also thrilled at the way physicians from across our health system are collaborating on how care is delivered in our communities. By partnering with St. Luke's Magic Valley and Treasure Valley physicians, we've been able to ensure appropriate access to specialties for our community. This collaboration is a true two-way street, with physicians from St. Luke's Wood River also traveling to other St. Luke's communities to provide needed supplemental coverage. This cooperation is a great example of how we take care forward for our patients by working together as a system. On behalf of all of us, I want to thank each of you for all you do for St. Luke's and our patients. Many of you know what Cody and his team were up against in August when fire threatened the Wood River Valley and the health homes and property of so many of our Wood River patients and colleagues. I want to acknowledge the great dedication and tireless work of the Wood River team. And Magic Valley and Air St. Luke's, which rushed in to support Wood River's efforts to make sure our patients were safe. We truly saw the spirit of St. Luke's and the benefits of being a health system. I don't know if you saw the smoke behind Cody in the video. It's a testament to his professionalism that we were able to film that the morning of multiple evacuation warnings in and around Ketchum. In the spring, I told you that we'd be sharing information about our strategic plan. Our three-year strategic plan pulls together all of our efforts. It's driving a big change in the way healthcare professionals do their work. It includes a business model that makes sense and takes into account what's best for the people who need care. We're making sure that all of our affiliated healthcare professionals work the same way for our patients and their families. Our goals all align with our strategy and have to do with using data to make our decisions, making sure we include the community we serve in all of our work working together as one organization, not doing things that are wasteful, working with healthcare professionals outside of St. Luke's to make care better, leading the way in quality and staying centered on our patients. And today, you've heard updates of many of the programs that propel our strategy forward. I want to read part of a note from one of our patients. This patient said, I just wanted to let you know, I went to my physician yesterday and had my blood drawn for my hemoglobin A1C. They called this morning and it was 7.0. It has never been that low. Plus, I lost three pounds. I want you and the nurse we worked with to know my results and how much I appreciate what you guys did for me. I think counting carbs, eating differently, 
and exercise will make a huge difference in my life and in the length of my life. I have struggled with my A1C for 17 years and it has all changed because of the education and support you all provided. This speaks to the sort of success we expect out of our diabetes education and management initiative and to our strategy, working together as one, not doing things that are wasteful, and staying centered on what our patients most need from us, in this case, education and support, rather than more medical treatment. And now, Jim Angle's got a few updates for you. Hi, I'm Jim Angle, Chief Executive Officer of St. Luke's Magic Valley and St. Luke's Jerome. Today, I'll share updates on some of the system efforts we've talked about in the spring and what we're doing in the Magic Valley to take care forward. We've talked about our 2013 goals having to do with the patient experience and teamwork, our increasing access to information in the form of our data analytics, the dashboards that let us dig into the data, and the measures we're building to track progress based on the data has been the basis for much of our recent work. And it has allowed us to apply teamwork in more focused ways. We have continued to refine our quality metrics, and I'm glad to say that understanding those measures and bearing down where there is opportunity has resulted in big wins. You saw the new dashboards we've been using in the spring. We've historically tracked performance and quality in our hospital settings, but we're doing more of this in our clinic settings now as well, and we have been refining those gauges over the past year. Factors such as cleanliness and quietness have been indicators for hospital staff members of how we're doing in those environments, and we have made steady progress in the past year toward our goal of being in the top 10% in terms of these scores nationwide. In our clinic settings, provider communication, the degree to which decision making is shared, and population health and wellness efforts are gauges of our accountable care progress. Here's one very specific example of how we are taking care forward based on our data analytics. One of our internal medicine physicians has dug into his diabetes management practices based on what his clinical integration scorecard measures have shown him and significantly improved his scores. This is a win in terms of the patient experience and is only one indication of the power of this improved and increased information. Clinics and physicians are also using the information to improve the frequency with which they talk about tobacco cessation. Our metrics are at the heart of our MSSP work You'll recall that St. Luke's is taking part in the federal Medicare Shared Savings Program, measuring our efforts, which data analytics make possible, is a program requirement. With our first claims data, for the first time, we will be able to see at the population level which of our patients have what conditions, which will greatly enhance our ability to implement all the initiatives Cody and the others have talked about. More than 25,000 St. Luke's patients are Medicare fee-for-service beneficiaries, so that's a large number of people we'll have good information on for the first time. With that claims data, we will be able to analyze the health of the population. It's that ability to amass data, read it, and act upon it that will make us an accountable care organization. It's what MSSP sets us up for. Medicare isn't the only thing that's changing on the payer landscape for St. Luke's. Many of our payer relationships are evolving. It has been about a year since we entered our first full risk contract and our select health relationship is catching on with an increasing number of employers in our region. The idea that together we can bend the cost curve by working with insurers to take a broader preventive approach to health and wellness has appealed to other employers and Select Health is ahead of its target less than a year after entering the market. We appreciate Select Health's vision and willingness to work with us toward our accountable care triple aim of better health, better care, and lower cost. I want to tell you about ways that our Magic Valley folks are doing their part to take care forward. When it comes to patient access, I'm very proud of our new quick care walk-in clinic. We plan to start slow, but this service has been extremely popular, 
And we've been seeing far more patients than we expected, as many as 60 in a day. The opportunity came through loud and clear when we conducted our needs assessment and we're thrilled at the community's response. I've also got nothing but great things to say about the team that has worked on our Magic Valley and Jerome patient portal and equal admiration for those who worked on our care transition coach program. I'm very proud of all the Magic Valley folks who do so much to take care forward every day in so many ways. On behalf of all of us, thank you for all you do for our patients and their families. I want to share a couple of examples of how our physician leaders are putting our technology and data to use. This just was not possible a year or so ago, even though we've had great physicians all along. We have needed to equip them with the tools and the information. And this intersection of our talents and the potential of technology is where I think we're going to be most effective when it comes to our strategy. This is Dr. Brian Fertuin. Many of you know Dr. Fertuin. If you don't, he's an internist in Twin Falls, and he's showing how the new information can be used to improve care. In using the White Cloud tool to understand his data, Dr. Fertuin saw that he was ordering fewer mammograms than he thought he was and that he should be. His office started focusing on mammograms, making sure that they were ordered and adding them to the records when they were performed elsewhere. He has said that this effort has turned up women who needed biopsies. He has also found that his patient satisfaction scores are going up. He is being more conscientious about the element of time in his scheduling and making sure patients receive satisfactory educational materials. His office has started using a depression screening tool, which is turning up depression in people that Dr. Fertuin would not have suspected. The screening itself facilitates more conversation. He's doing more fall screening now, and he can see who's at high risk and talk to them about falling. Just knowing his own patterns means he can implement strategies. He says the White Cloud tool started being useful to him the first day he saw it. It's helping him build new systems to support good medicine. And this is Dr. Michael Hedemark. He is an internist with St. Luke's Internal Medicine in Meridian. Dr. Hedemark has been active as the Slim Quality Committee Chair and chairman of the Quality and Patient Safety Council of the Treasure Valley. He has looked at the data in White Cloud Tool from across the various SLIM sites and compared the sites to see who's having success with different approaches and where there are challenges. In the patient-centeredness information, he has seen how important timely care is to his patients. That has led him to consider the different factors of his practice and what might be changed. Slim Meridian has moved to improve the patient experience when it comes to timeliness by instituting a same-day physician. But Dr. Hedemark and the group aren't finished with their improvements. They know that patients want to see their own physicians. Based on what they see in the data, they can make changes and educate around the role of physician assistants and other pr practitioners. Based on the data, Dr. Hedemark also has been refining his diabetic care and looking at this across SLIM sites. Both Dr. Fortuin and Dr. Hedemark are embracing the analytics that are key to our accountable care future, and they are not alone. I've shared stories previously from Dr. Rob Smith and many others are getting into their data and asking themselves, what can I do to create an exceptional patient experience and exceptional outcomes based on what I see here in the data? Our physician leaders, leaders like Dr. Fertuin, Dr. Hedemark, Dr. Thompson, and the many physicians I talked about in the spring are helping us make gains on better health, better care, and lower costs, our triple aim. Their spirit of innovation and transformation and yours takes care forward at St. Luke's. 
I want to close with a shining example of a man who has been taking care forward for St. Luke's patients for a long time, Gary Fletcher. Gary's dedication to excellence in healthcare spans more than four decades, and his legacy of improving the health of people in Idaho is timeless. During his tenure, St. Luke's has grown from one hospital to a health system of seven hospitals and more than 100 clinics. Gary's leadership has been integral to so many of our successes, achievements in oncology, cardiology, neonatology, emergency medicine, medical research, surgical procedures, and medical imaging have all been encouraged and supported under Gary's leadership. St. Luke's was also designated Idaho's first magnet organization and has achieved redesignation twice with Gary supporting the effort. Thank you, Gary. And thank you all for everything you do every day on behalf of this region and its people.